Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. So today's job is to take this chunk of 10 inch solid round stock, it's 1045, and turn it down to an inch and 15 sixteenths on one end with a big plate on the other for a stub shaft for a big roller. Now many of you are going to question the, the logic behind this because you're probably all going to say why don't you just weld a plate onto the end of a shaft and make it that way. Well, that is not what the OEM specifies. So I'm building this for a customer that uh, has actual drawings from the engineering department and they make it out of solid bar stock and turn it down. So let's get it up in the lion lathe and start making some big chips. All right, so we got it up here in the lathe and you may be wondering what this is. This is just a plate that I've got a center drill hole mark in it um, that I can use to push up against the chuck. And then I'm gonna use this as my center for a ways. Um, I'm gonna turn it down the diameter until I get close to it and then I'll switch to a smaller one and just get the weight down before I face that end off. And you know, a lot of you are probably gonna comment about the three jaw chuck, you gotta use a four jaw. No, you don't. I've been doing this for 25 years and I've done it this way forever. This works very well. So I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, turning it and taking a good heavy cutoff. So as you can see, it's a little, little out around on this end. It's actually true in the chuck, which is fine. And this is oversized material. Touch it off. And I'm just gonna take a quarter inch, an eighth each side on this first pass. see how it does. a nice finish. I could maybe push my feet a little bit harder with some coolant, um, but we'll get it measured up, see where it's at, and then uh, get going on our next cut. Okay, so I turned this um, the length of the stub shaft plus a little bit because we'll face it off after we get some weight off of it. Um, I am just under 10 inches. I'm at uh, 9.957. So I backed it off 40, 43, actually about 44 thou. Um, and I'm going to clean up my 10 inch, which is not critical. That's just an outside finish diameter. We'll turn that little bit. And that'll finish that off to size there. And then we'll start the, the hogging of all the material. I slowed my feed rate down a little bit. We'll see how it does. And this is, that might be too slow. 375,000 steep. Yep, we're just a little slow. So I'm gonna speed it up a little bit more. My infinite caution, I went down to 7,000 per rev. I'm up to 10 now. Let's see if this makes a nicer chip, much better.
size of those chips. I mean, beautiful blue chips coming off nicely. But they're just shooting up in the air. Nice finish. And that 1045 cuts beautifully. It's some nice cutting material. I mean, look at these chips. Absolutely beautiful. Probably a little hot yet. Oh, that one's cool. Very nice chips, but my floor is filling up quickly. So I'm going to keep whittling away at this. I've already taken an inch and a half off the diameter. It's doing good at three eighths. Um, but I'm going to take a half inch this pass. And I'm running a CNMG 432 insert. I slowed my feed rate down just a touch because that's quite a chip load. I'm down to eight and a half. We're just going to see what it does. And I can stop it real quick if I don't like it. Looks like I could speed it up a little bit, but it's not a huge chip load, so that's good. went really well. I'm going to take another half inch and I up my feed rate just a little bit. And let's just keep cutting.
So this is going really well, um, but I got one little issue here, and maybe you can see it. And you can see it in the air. So it's time to turn the air conditioner off. I just opened the front door, and I'm just gonna come over here and turn on. There's an exhaust fan up there in the ceiling for this exact purpose. And that's about 4,000 CFM. That'll pulse from fresh air through the front door and right past me. Um, we'll keep going. But I want to try. We're down to about 7 inch diameter right now. And the next step I got here is 180 RPM. Now that might be too much, might take out my insert, but hey, so what? You got to try, you got to push these things and, and just see what you can do. Um, so we're going to try it. I am going to drop my feed rate down just one, just to get a little bit of load off of it. And then we'll uh, see how it cuts. So we'll take another half inch, another 500 thousandths at 180 RPM. And here goes nothing. Still breaking the chip nicely. So well, we're gonna run with that, see how it does. Okay, so now I'm at the point now where I can't take another half inch pass because this piece is, my pusher block here is too big. I'm gonna face it off um, to length now, put the center drill mark in it, and then we'll be good to go. But I'm at a point where I have to do some chip control because as you can see, the webbing in the, the bed there is filling up. Um, and I, <laughs> this is making a lot of chips. I mean, not only the ones on the floor, but a lot getting up here in the bed and so I just need to fish some of them out and make some room for more and then we'll clean it out after the job I'm just curious how much weight is there I think this part started out at about 400 and some pounds and I'm gonna finish it off I think at 46 um, per the customers specifications now this is actually a prototype and I can't film the entire job. Um, the back end of the plate itself I won't be able to film, but the turning of the shaft, they allowed me the, the rights to film that, which is awesome of them and, and I appreciate their, their willingness to work with me on this stuff. So, Well, we made a little bit of room up there. I might have to push the top bit down. But uh, I think we can go back to, to turning here pretty soon. There, it dropped in. Now oh, we got some room to work. So I'll go ahead and I'll face that end, center drill it, and then we'll get back to the hard turning.
So this pass brings us down to four inches and you see all that steam coming off from the coolant. If you look, watch carefully, you can see it flowing towards the exhaust fan and it's definitely much cleaner where I'm standing breathing. So definitely not a concern here, but um, I'm gonna step it up on the next pass in speed and just see how it does with the coolant. Uh, the reason I'm running slow right now is to keep the coolant from flying everywhere. Um, but it's taking it very well, it's cutting very nicely. We'll just see how it does on the next pass. As you can see, it's quite hot. And we still got a ways to go, so I'm not concerned about the heat in there just yet. We'll get it close to size and then I'll worry about it. But I'm gonna take three eighths, so three sixteenths aside now because we're getting down close. And I don't want too much load on this bar. Looks like I could speed up my feed rate a little bit. She's definitely cutting good. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, increase the feed rate. Try to get a nice chip coming off again. There we go. Okay, so this is the last. This was the last roughing pass. We're down to two and a half inch diameter from 10 inch. The next, I'm going to change out my insert. I'll get my distance. This end is faced to to length. I'll get my distance from to here. Face all this off so it's nice, and then we'll come back. There's a step, and then uh, turn the rest of the shaft down to inch and 15 sixteenths. Now. Again, this is what the customer specified. This is what they wanted. I've seen several different customers now sending me drawings of this exact type of setup. Not doing a two-piece welded, but doing a single shaft turned from a solid bar. So it's interesting that, that this is kind of the way things are swaying that I'm seeing. So um, I've been seeing a lot of this actually, I'm doing a lot of quotes on stuff like this. A lot of material removal, but failure rate is almost zero when you do it this way without welding it. Um, I've, I've had them, I've been very lucky, none of mine have ever failed welded two-piece, but I've heard of a lot of other shops have had failures with the welded two-piece. So again, this is a new thing that a lot of, a lot of places I'm quoting, I, I'm seeing. So um, seems to be working out for everybody and we'll just keep doing it this way. So I'll get my insert changed out and we'll get on the next step. I don't know how good you can see this, but this is the corner I was using and it held up extremely well for all that turning. So I'm just going to flip it over because I still got a good corner, but this is a CNMG insert, uh, 432, uh, Sandvik insert, and they hold up extremely well. So we'll get this back in and then I'll get started on facing. So i just touch it off, zero my digital readout. Run it back, run it down to my length, and I should be very close. I planned this out quite, quite tight, so right there. We'll just face this off.
Now I should probably speed up my feed, but I'm, I want that nice mirror finish that's on there. That's absolutely beautiful. See my hook here, this is what I'm using. Just a, a bent hook. Nothing special. Okay, right, there it is. All roughed out on the shaft. Nice finish on the on the plate here. I'm gonna let this thing cool uh, overnight and I'll come back to it in the morning and finish it up. Uh, finish up the turning on the shaft. And then I gotta do the proprietary part I can't show. The customer specified, do not film this. The back end, just film this. And I'm good with that. All right, well, it's next morning and, and uh, we're ready to start on the next step. So we'll get started on the turning here. And this time I'm gonna run a lot faster and get a better surface finish. And because I got the weight down too, that really makes a big difference. We're going to take 200 thou on this pass. Just a quick measurement to see where we are. We got about 100 and 165 to go, roughly. I'll run the coolant on it a while and cool it off so it doesn't screw with our measurements. All that steam you see is from the hot chips down below. Take a light pass with a little bit slower feed rate so it makes a, a nice surface finish and then we'll measure it and take the final cut. Nine sixty six, and we actually got to go to nine thirty five. And I always double check it in two places just to see if we're turning a taper. Nine sixty six, perfect. So now we'll take the last little bit here. We'll take a shortcut, stop, measure it, see where we're at, and then finish it off. Nine thirty five, perfect. Now it's going to touch that little bit on the end a little bit, not much. Don't worry about that, that's just fine. Most of the time, you take that off of the chamfer anyway.
Perfect. Now we put our two chamfers on. Okay, and the last and final step here is a 20 degree chamfer here. Um, it's not a radius, this, the way this was designed, um, so that's what they want is a 20 degree taper. And I'm just doing it with the compound. I could use the taper attachment, but this is a lot faster for just one piece. So we'll go ahead and just cut that. Well, there it is, a very large proctology device. It's floor mounted, so it's very stable. Yeah, okay. It is a nice start to the stub shaft. What a job that was. Um, taking half an inch off the diameter with each pass. Um, came out very nice. Now, the other end is proprietary. I can't show that, so I'm gonna go ahead and get going on that, but we'll end the video here. Stay tuned, there's more fun stuff coming. Until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.